the only information given to us here is that this is an equilateral triangle please this is not drawn to scale and we are asked to find the angle here how do we go about this is this possible yes it is now welcome back to my channel we have an amazing and interesting one to solve okay so this is touching this line at this point like i said this is a freehand sketch so shouldn't as expect it to be perfect okay now first triangle a b c is an equilateral triangle so a b c is an equilateral triangle and is an important information that we can talk about is an equilateral triangle okay so this implies this simply implies that angle a is equal to angle b which is equal to angle c which is equal to 60 degrees okay so it means that this place is 60 degrees we don't need any other place don't worry okay now we are told that this is the center of this circle let's call it o their meeting point let's call it e this place let's call it p okay now there's this theorem that we need to put that we need to use all right now this theorem states that when two circles meet each other internally or externally okay let me write it down for those that always say that they don't understand my accent that i have a strong accent okay so i'm going to write it down when two circles meet each other meet each other externally or internally okay if you join their meeting point to the point of contact a straight line is formed okay a straight line joins the meeting point and their centers so I hope this makes sense. What they're trying to say is that if I join O to E to P, I'm going to have get a straight line. So let's do that. Even though this is not drawn to scale, please, O, E, P is a straight line. All right. So that is it. I'm going to clean this off now because I believe you all now understood what I was trying to say. All right. Now, like I said, we have limited information, but the one we have is enough for us to get the value of x. Now, having joined that, then we need to make some assumptions. It's not an assumption. It's actually a, a truth. There are truths. Now, we have this triangle here, here, and here, right? So, triangle... O, E, let's call this D. And let me stay here so that I can see what I'm saying. So triangle O, E, D is an isosceles triangle. Why? Remember that from here to here is the radius of this circle. Let's call it R. So O, E is also the radius of the circle. Let's call it R. Now, when two sides of a triangle are equal, that triangle is an isosceles triangle and the base angles are equal the base angles are equal so that means if i call this alpha this place is alpha as well right now if we use the external angle theorem what does that state it states that the sum of two opposite angles is equal to its external angle okay the external angle is equal to the sum of what two opposite internal angle so it means that angle o e if we call this place p okay we have p already so if we call this f so it means that o e f is equal to sorry e o f because we're talking about this triangle 
So angle EOF is equal to 2 alpha. That is alpha plus alpha, which will give us 2 alpha. So we can write that here, 2 alpha. <laughs> You'll be surprised that we are done. Like we are already very close to the solution. Now, if this is the first time you are seeing us, please click the subscription button, turn on the notification bell, so I don't miss our videos, all right? We always upload our videos as often as we can. So tune in at your, conf at your convenience. There must be something new for you to watch by God's grace. Give us a thumbs up if you're actually enjoying this video. Thank you very much. Now, looking at this drawing, if we decide to look at this particular triangle, so let's call this G, okay? So for triangle G, E, P, G E P. You can see that it is also an isosceles triangle. Yes, because if we say E P is the radius of this circle, let's call the radius R. That means this place from here to here is also R, right? So it means that this is an isosceles triangle. So the base angles must be equal. So if we call this better, this should be better as well. Now, using the external angle theorem as well, then you see that P is also 2 beta. All right? Now, I want us to look at what we have here. If you look at this triangle, O, P, this is C, right? O, P, C. Triangle O, P, C. You will notice that we have this this and this remember that this is a straight line so we have o p this is o p and we have c so this is two alpha this is two beta and this is 60. okay now remember that angle in a triangle the sum of angle in a triangle is 180 so it simply means that two alpha plus 2 beta plus 60 is equal to 180 degrees. If we transfer this to the other side, we have 2 alpha plus 2 beta is equal to 180 minus 60. 2 alpha plus 2 beta is equal to 120. Okay? Now let us factorize 2 out. 2 bracket alpha plus beta is equal to 120. Okay? So we go ahead and divide both sides by 2. So if we divide both sides by 2, we have alpha plus beta is equal to 60. Now we keep this aside because it's going to help us in our next step. Okay? So let's call this equation 1. Now, I want us to look at OEP. OEP is a straight line. Is a straight line. Okay? OEP is a straight line. And what about straight line is that angle on a straight line is 180 degrees. Okay? So, angle on a straight line is equal to 180. We need to clean this so that we have, we can see what we are doing. All right, now angle on a straight line is 180. So it simply means that on this OEP, we have angle alpha plus the X that we are asked to find plus angle beta. So all of them should be equal to 180 degrees. Okay, now we have alpha, this is beta, sorry. So we have alpha plus beta plus x is 180. If we arrange it very well, right? Now, already alpha plus beta is 60. So we say 60 plus x is equal to 180. So if we transfer this to this side, we have that x is 180 minus 60. So x is equal to 120 degrees. Thank you so much for watching.